Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. I want to talk about these illegal actions that are being taken by the governor. I started the Healthy American going on four years ago when I broke the news about the governor in California in terms of how he had zero legitimate authority for shutting things down, telling you that you were not essential making people uh, follow these ridiculous requirements that people thought were legitimate because they actually believed that a governor could tell them what to do. Well, I've been exposing not only Newscom, as I call him, but also Joshi Green Do Deal. And apparently now I need to turn my attention over to the governor of New Mexico. And I'm going to do that for you in just a moment. It is quite stomach turning when these governors are all following the same playbook and they say things like, well, you know, I might get a legal challenge, but I'm just going to push this through anyway. It reminds me of that expression we used to have back in the old days, where it's easier to ask forgiveness than to get permission. That's exactly the slimy approach that they are taking. It really is stomach turning. And speaking of stomachs, I want to share with you a new I'm trying to make a little segue here. I want to share with you a new sponsor that I have. And you probably have heard of Dr. Gundry, and this is all about digestive issues. So let me cue that up for you here. I'm going to share my screen and we are going right on over to gut cleanse protocol.com slash Peggy. And I will have a link for you in the description box below. So speaking of digestive issues, this is caused by a potential toxin. And uh, that's in all of the quote, healthy foods that scientists have been telling us to eat. You know, it's basically based on this fraudulent food pyramid and they've been pushing this for the longest time. So this potential toxin causes digestive issues. According to Dr. Gundry, he's a world renowned cardiologist, and this is affecting millions of people nationwide. So this is where I want you to go is to gut cleanse protocol. Uh, dot com slash Peggy. And uh, the rest of the message I want to share with you is that warning signs include weight gain and fatigue and digestive discomfort and stiff joints, even skin problems. So Dr. Gundry explains that these side effects are often mistaken for normal signs of aging because digestive issues develop at, that develop usually do so over a matter of years and sometimes even decades. So I can assure you that the damage is probably caused by these so-called health foods and it's far from normal. So the good news is that you can easily fix these problems right from your own home. It's very simple. You have to know which foods are actually healthy and which contain these hidden potential toxins. So I want you to go to gutcleanseprotocol.com slash Peggy. I'll have that link for you in the description box below, gutcleanseprotocol.com slash Peggy. And after years of research, Dr. Gundry has decided to release this informative video that I was sharing with you right here. I'd love for you to watch it. And then you can learn from him exactly what, which foods you need to avoid. This is a video that he's making available for free. So I hope that you will go watch that after this video, of course. All right, let's turn our attention to the slimy tactics that have been taken by these governors. And you know, they all belong to this governor's association. I don't know if you're aware of that. So let me show this to you real quick, because this is something that I think many people are unaware of, and it is called the National Governors Association. And this is where I think they sit around and share their slimy tactics. You know, these public serpents, as I call them, uh, that's what they are when they're serving evil. So this is called the National Governors Association. It is a just a group where the governors come together. As I say, they share their slimy tactics. And apparently the governor of New Mexico, the governor of California, of Hawaii, of New York, of let's see what else, Oregon, Washington, they uh, probably are all in cahoots trying to figure out how they can possibly uh, enslave us with their, uh, how shall we call them, illegal, illegitimate, emergency orders. So I will leave a link for you if you are interested in reading more. This is the National Governors Association. These are the things that they're involved in, including the workforce development. You know how I can't uh, 
stand that phrase either. But what I want to do is show you this governor here and what she is up to. So the New Mexico governor narrows her gun ban to be restricted to playgrounds, parks in Albuquerque and the surrounding county. Let me bring you up to date in case this is something that you hadn't heard about. So the governor, who actually was born in New Mexico, and her name is Michelle Grisham, she issued an updated public health order. Now, first of all, <laughs> yes, governors have authority that is given to them by their state constitution. So you need to study your state's constitution. And in the state of California, the governor actually can issue an emergency order if the magnitude of the natural disaster or, uh, well, mo most of those are, right? Floods, earthquakes, we have natural fires. And then if there is a contagious disease in California, if it meets a level where the magnitude is so overwhelming that it will take more than just, for example, one county to be able to handle it, then the governor can trigger this state of emergency, which also allows the governor and the state to get federal money, 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 and power and ego and corruption and tyranny and oppression is usually at the root of all of this. So a public health order related to the bang banks, as I'm going to call them, sounds pretty far-fetched to me. In the state of New Mexico, she doesn't have these kinds of authorities related to the bang banks. So what happened is she issued this order and I've got it up here for you. It was first issued on September 8th. So let's do a little bit of a deep dive here. Many of you were interested in finding out about this. She said that because the bang bang violence and drug abuse together currently constitute statewide public health emergencies. Well, I would say that they're a public safety emergency. And let me also state for the record that I am opposed to this phrase, uh, bang, bang violence. And I'm using my code words because I'm trying to hang on to this channel without having it being taken down or getting a strike, which is why I use my own code words. No, people don't die because of bang, bang violence. They die because of either an accident or sadly via suicide or through criminal activity because an individual is breaking the law. That's where the blame needs to go, not on the bang bang and certainly not on the law abiding owners of those bang banks. So she said that, or she wrote that she's uh, collaborating with the New Mexico Department of Homeland Security. That's very strange because that's a federal agency and emergency management, the New Mexico Department of Public Safety. Yes, okay, I agree. This is a safety issue, not so much a public health issue. This is what she just declared as if she's the queen of uh, the world here and of New Mexico, apparently. No person other than a law enforcement officer or licensed security officer shall possess this bang bang as defined in New Mexico statutory authority. I think that's what that means. Section 30-7.4.1, either openly or concealed within cities or counties averaging a thousand or more violent crimes per 100,000 residents. Well, gee, I don't think I have my calculator on me, governor. So if I have the legal right to possess that bang bang in public, and I just don't happen to know how many violent crimes were committed and how many residents of the city. I mean, so the whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. So this was issued on September 8th. All right. As you can imagine, there was a lot of outcry. And here's why. Number one, if the state wants to limit who has the right to possess the bang bangs, either concealed or openly in any city or county or any location, it's not the governor who decides. It's not the sheriff who decides. Who is it that decides? You're absolutely right. It's the legislative body. It's the legislature. In our American form of government, we have three distinct branches. 
Ideally, they should have co-equal power. They definitely need to be separate. And this is what creates our constitutional republic. You do not have power concentrated in one person, unlike in England, for example, or although they do have a king and a queen, obviously now they have a parliamentary system, but the history was that the power was concentrated in one individual. In the kingdom of Morocco, that's still basically the case. He can say something and that is basically law. So these governors are trying to bamboozle you. They're trying to hoodwink and, um, you know, swindle and make you believe that they have the ability to just issue these proclamations and that they have the force of law. The governor is in the executive branch of government, just like the president is in the executive branch of government. In your city, it would be the mayor is the executive branch. And then you have a legislative body. That is the lawmaking body. In our constitution, the fact that we created a country where the lawmaking authority was in the legislative body, it was so important and so unique in this form of government that it was described first in our constitution. Then they talked about the president, then they talked about the judicial branch and that's the third branch. So you have the executive branch, which carries out the laws that were passed by the legislative body. It's so sad that they're not teaching this in school anymore. This was called civics. It was my favorite subject for some reason. I really was interested in how political systems are formed and by what right does someone have an authority over me? In fact, they don't, as long as I'm a law, you know, following the laws and not harming anyone. So I always had this kind of interesting fascination with political systems and not just in the United States, but in other countries. And although our form of government is not perfect, it does have principles that I believe are worth fighting for. And one of those is the separation of power. It's also known as checks and balances so that the power is not concentrated in one branch of government. You've got the executive branch, the legislative branch, and then you've got the judicial branch. So in the judicial branch, you have the courts, you have the prisons, you have the sheriff, you have law enforcement. And ideally, the courts are where we bring our disputes, such as, this governor just making a law through an executive order. That's not legal. So there was an immediate uh, legal action taken in terms of having a court put the brakes on. And that's exactly what happened. So let me just tell you about that because I made a couple of notes about that. So what happened is that, uh, let me find my notes here. There was a federal judge who blocked part of this public health order that suspended the right to carry the bang bangs in public across New Mexico's largest metro area. So I'm just reading a little bit from my notes with criticism mounting and political divides widening over the Democratic governor's action. I actually grabbed this off of uh, AP of all places. The ruling Wednesday by U.S. District Judge David Urias marks a setback for the governor. He was appointed, this judge was actually appointed by uh, Brandon, by the resident in chief. And he did agree with the plaintiffs who brought this lawsuit saying that Grisham, the mayor, I'm sorry, <laughs> she really is acting really at a lower level. She is not acting with the decorum and the understanding of her responsibilities and limitations as a governor. So she was accused of trampling on the constitutional rights. So the judge granted a temporary restraining order to block this public health order. So what happened is a couple of days later, she issued a new health order. And let me show you that one. And then I'm going to tell you why that is still a problem. So let me see if I've got that uh, up here for you as well. All right, here we go. This is her amended order. Let me know in a comment why you think this is still troubling. So this came out a few days later, September 15th. And here's what she did. She modified it to say no person other than a law enforcement officer or licensed security officer or active duty military personnel shall possess the bang bang either openly or concealed in public parks or playgrounds or other public areas 
provided for children to play in. So she sort of limited it and restricted it to that area. This is still a major problem. And here's why. Well, actually, I have a whole list of reasons why it's a problem. And I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So first of all, she doesn't have the legitimate authority to declare this type of, um, let's just say, illegal behavior and illegal activity. That's not a public health issue. It troubles me that she is putting it under that category, just like Joshi. Some of you are calling him Slosh, Slosh Green. That's pretty funny, Slosh Green do deal. He doesn't have the power to say that homelessness is a public health crisis. And that's how he created this homeless executive order or actually an emergency proclamation. And what that does in Hawaii, it actually gives him the ability to suspend laws, meaning to break the law, to violate the law. Now, both Joshi and Grisham really overextended their reach. They did this on purpose. This is what really troubles me. They knew that it was illegal and they did it anyway. They followed that old adage of it's easier to ask uh, for an apology rather than to ask for permission or to apologize than to ask for permission. So they knew that they were overstepping. They did this anyway with complete disregard for our political system, complete disregard for the legislature. Now, this also happened in New York. So in the state of New York, and I brought you a video from Bobby Ann Cox, who is fighting the health department that also issued this sweeping order that stated that anyone could be forced into quarantine or isolation if the governor or the health officer or the health department just, you know, suspected that they might have been exposed some, to some kind of contagious disease. Now, I did a deep dive on that in New York, in California, in Hawaii, and I, uh, I think I did another state, is, and in Florida, which is surprising, and there are similar laws that are actual laws that were passed by the legislature. So Bobby Ann Cox is fighting this on the grounds that the health department doesn't have the authority to create a law. And the health department doesn't have a, an authority to create a law, which is why I can't stand it when people say mandate, mandate, mandate. No, they don't have the authority to do that. Only a judge can issue a mandate. Otherwise it's a law or it's a suggestion. All right, so the fact that these governors either through their health departments or just through their own proclamations are blatantly violating the constitution is literally stomach turning. I should have told you to have the uh, vomit bucket nearby. I have mine uh, nearby permanently because this is just so stomach turning. Now they backtrack just like the governor in Hawaii, Joshi Green Dew Deal said, oh, you know what? I guess, I guess I will reinstitute that law about the Hawaiian homelands. And I, yeah, I guess we'll still allow those regulations to be in place. And, you know, I guess I won't break that law any longer about having the uh, meetings are supposed to be held in public. Yeah, I guess we'll allow the meetings to be held in public. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you give the commentary and your testimony, but only for a minute. What bothers me about this and what bothers me about this New Mexico Grisham, she comes out and says, well, okay, I, all right, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. Do you see the problem, friends? It reinforces the wrong idea that these governors even have this legitimate power. They don't. They are completely doing this just to bulldoze and bamboozle the population. And I'm telling you, it's so sad that it's working. And I know it's working because millions of people went along with this Going on four years ago, they closed their businesses, they suffocated themselves, they had the nasal Schwab assault, and they did all of these other things because they thought the governor had the authority to tell them what to do. This is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm still fighting in my county. I have an active lawsuit. It's actually called a writ of mandate. It's asking and actually requesting the court to just issue a declaratory statement that 
the county, which is another legislative body, cannot give its power to the governor. And that's exactly what they did. They said, we're not going to rule on this. We're going to let the governor tell us what to do. It's illegal. And I'm fighting it tooth and nail. And it's still ongoing. I have one more hearing in October. I would appreciate your prayers. I'm grateful for your financial support. I still have a lot of legal bills to pay. I haven't really wanted to mention this over the last several months. I know so many people are being hit hard as we all by this inflation. And if you are interested, there is a link where you can uh, donate electronically online. You can do a Zelle payment or you can send me a check. Anyway, I'm so grateful for all of you that have partnered with me. This is what I'm fighting to maintain our constitutional republic form of government. So changing these orders, like going out full force and then backtracking, that still bothers me. It doesn't do the trick. They still are operating illegally. Now, she's planting the seeds for the bang bang grab. And it's planted in people's minds now that the governor has the authority to do that. I'm going to share a couple of images with you at the end of this video, because some of these things just don't add up for me. What also bothered me is she said, um, okay, I see the pain of families who lost their loved ones to the bang, bang violence. How about to the criminal activity and behavior uh, every single day? So what about people, I, I hate to get graphic here, but what about somebody that was, um, their life was taken and there was no weapon? Are you gonna cut the people's hands off because they use the hands that that was their weapon? You see, you can't blame it on the weapon. That's my point. They will go after knives. I promise you they're going to do that. They're going to plant a lot of stories and they already have been doing that over the years. See if you can recall a lot of the stories, you know, the slasher stories and all that. They will go after the knives. They'll go after the hammers. You can't even, you have to have a plastic I don't even think they give you a fork on the airlines any longer. I think they give you a plastic spoon. It's so ridiculous treating people um, in this manner. She said uh, that, let's see there. She said something really, really troubling. Okay. She is being uh, possibly impeached. So some of the state representatives are stating that this you know, illegitimate order was grounds for impeachment, that it it violates the governor's oath to protect and defend the constitutional rights of New Mexicans. So she said, the governor said, I have emergency powers. Bang, bang violence is an epidemic. Therefore, it's an emergency. And then she said, no, you're not going to believe this one. No constitutional right, in my view, including my oath, is intended to be absolute. This is, I'm just going to call it like I sees it. She's a public serpent. All right, let me show you this. And we're going to look at a couple of images here. So this is the public serpent who is trampling on the rights of New Mexicans. And it's, it is not limited to that because it sets the stage for this narrative that governors have the right to just issue these emergency proclamations whenever they feel like it. So she did it. Newscom has done it in New York and, of course, notably in Hawaii. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of images. And I just want to give you a little Actually, let me come off the screen share for a moment. This might be where you want to stop watching the video because some of you may not want to hear my uh, theory, but I'm just going to share it anyway. I am a person who is highly skeptical of anything that is being pushed in the media. When I see these news stories that are focused on uh, these tragedies and they are pushed again and again and again, it makes me skeptical. Let me say from the get-go, my heart breaks for anyone who has suffered any kind of violence. And I know personally in my family, extended, you know, cousins of cousins and so forth, um, extended family members, maybe that's not the right way of putting it. I have people close to me that I know. There are those who have lost their lives in violent ways. I'm just going to put it that way. So I have a great deal of compassion, of anger and outrage at anyone who has perpetrated this violence upon an innocent person. I am on the record for that, especially when it comes to children and animals. I am 100% opposed to all of that. 
That's on the record. And there are stories that are planted in the media to elicit an emotional response, especially related to children and animals as well. Because so many of us have a compassionate heart for these innocents. It's possible that what we're shown in the news related to some of these violence, stories of violence, it's possible that they are exactly as presented. There's nothing to be questioned. There's nothing suspicious or curious or controversial. I will give you that. It's possible that this incident, which triggered, if I can use that word, this uh, grab for the bang bangs, there was an 11 year old boy who was in a car as a passenger and out of the blue, people drove up and started shooting him at the car. That's the story. It's strange. It elicits an emotional response probably right now when I said that to you. It's terrifying. You don't want to think of it. And these stories are in the news frequently. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does happen. There are times when these stories are authentic. And isn't it possible that there are times when these stories are planted or sensationalized or maybe even fabricated? Yes, it's possible. And when I see certain symbols and gestures and patterns that are repeated again and again, that really makes me skeptical because it's not just a one-time incident, but it's again and again. So in this push to eliminate law-abiding citizens like you and me from owning the bang bangs, there are these stories that are covered in the news. And when I start to see similar patterns, it really makes me raise my eyebrows. So the news will even say things like, well, these children were just doing everyday normal things, you know, having an ice cream, driving in a car and out of the blue, it's usually they're in a car. And then out of the blue, somebody shows up and just starts doing the, you know, bang, bang. And it's like, okay, that is terrifying. I hope it doesn't happen. I actually, maybe I'm a little bit uh, too optimistic, hoping that this doesn't happen that much. And that some of these are planted stories in an effort for these governors to then do their grabs in their way. So having given you that, (laughs) I know this is going to be controversial. I am going to share my screen and I am going to show you some images of another, um, story that was in the news of a young girl. And the other thing I'm going to say is sometimes what also gets my curiosity going and my skepticism is that sometimes the names are unusual. And I'm not quite sure if they're computer generated names or if these are authentic names, or maybe I'm just not with it and I'm not aware of these kinds of names. So having said that, my heart breaks and I, I have a great deal of compassion for anyone that has lost a loved one through any means, especially through violent means, and especially if they were young. So having said that, let's take a look at these very odd pictures that were selected to be in the news out of all the images that could be given for these news stories. These are the ones that are presented. All right, let me cue that up. I gave you fair warning. If you don't want to see this, I I totally understand. There's nothing graphic here at all. It's just very strange. All right. So here's the first one. Let me share my screen. All right. This is uh, an eight-year-old. What do you see in that image? Okay. Do you see that here with her gesture of the hand? And strangely, it almost looks like this picture and this picture, they almost look like they're exactly the same. And they grabbed this picture out of this one and put her against the brick wall. Now, for those that understand the link of the the bricklayers, I'll just put it that way, the secret societies and how that is a symbol often to indicate to people in the know that this could be a false narrative. So you see the fingers again, you see it again, you see it again. Okay. Sicoria, a very unusual name. Out of all the images, and I did a whole internet search. I had this in my file because I thought it was so strange from some time ago. And I thought really interesting. Now let's look at the little boy whose incident was said to kick off this. Oh, well, looky there. 
Now, he's 11 years old, they said, eight and 11, Fernando. Actually, that's not, the, the boy was Froyan, which also quite an unusual name, and there he is again. All right, so I find that quite strange. And in, unless you say, well, you know what, Peggy, all the eight and 11-year-olds are doing that, well, we'll just do a little uh, search on Giggle to see what other eight and 11 year olds are doing. And before we do that, I'll just leave you this image. Here's a little bonus image. L let me know if you know um, who these guys are, these boys. Yeah, you might know who they are. All right. That was just a little extra. Okay, let's do this. I like to get your critical thinking skills going, friends. I think that's very important. So, what I'm going to do is just let's say, um, Eight-year-old, uh, you know, I don't know, wins a uh, contest or something. Let's just take a look and see how many eight-year-olds we see doing that same gesture. Maybe it's something eight-year-olds do, and I, I'm not with it. Okay, I don't see any. I'm just doing a giggle search. I don't see any eight-year-olds uh, doing that. No. How about eleven? Maybe eleven-year-olds do it. So. To me, when I see that those are the images that are released by the news on these very, very sad, does this boy have it? No, he's just waving on very, very tragic circumstances. Um, I don't not, I'm just doing a random giggle search here. I don't see any eight or 11 year olds uh, doing that gesture or she had a little thumbs up. Um, when I see that, it gets my curiosity going and my skepticism going. And ideally, the you know those children are fine, and I don't even know maybe they're computer generated images or something, and I could, totally could be off base. And my heart and prayers go out to those if that's the case. But I think it's very strange that those are the images. This is the kind of critical thinking that I do when I'm looking for patterns and looking to see what is being pushed in the news. I'm going to end up by saying this, friends. The bottom line is <laughs> control. All right. The public serpents want to rule over you. And in our system of government, which has been corrupted, oh my gosh, over the many, you know, hundreds of years, it has been corrupted. But now there's an all out, like last ditch effort to, to just go for it, to go for the bang bangs, to go for your uh, ability to move freely, to live where you want to, to... Uh, own a home, to own property, to drive a car, to have a gas, you know, uh, natural gas powered dryer. They want to control your electricity. It's all about control. And they're going to continue to push these news stories. And even if they have happened, they're going to sensationalize them, which I also think is despicable. So I'm going to be covering this story and I will bring you any updates that I hear about. And I want you to also be on guard in your state when you hear about these emergency orders under the guise of public health. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's no such thing as public health. There's individual health. There's public safety. There's public sanitation. So if this governor in New Mexico is so concerned about the safety in the streets, then why doesn't she work with the legislative body? Why doesn't she um, you know, work with some key senators or assembly people in her state? And they can draft some legislation that can then be taken. It can then go through the proper channels and she can sign that bill into law, but she cannot just make this on a whim. Why doesn't she, in her ability as the executive, why doesn't she create um, some kind of public safety committees or something where they can study what can be done? And for heaven's sake, don't issue orders like they did in California for the sheriff to empty out the prisons. That's what happened in California. So our streets are full of criminals. It's not a safe place to live. Among that and the homeless and people can just run in and take what they want in the stores. Why not issue an emergency order over that? Oh, I forgot, because criminals don't follow the law. She really thinks that this emergency order is going to be followed by the criminals. Wow. <laughs> She's more inept and uh, 
more of a serpent than I thought. All right, friends, thanks for following along with this one. I look forward to seeing you in an upcoming video, always over at thehealthyamerican.org. Best is to get on my free Substack. There's a link for you below. I do a lot of this on a deep dive so you can have a written format to share and uh, read at your leisure. All right, see you soon, everybody.